Okay, so we're going to find all the integer solutions m and n to this equation. And our approach is going to involve modular arithmetic. So the key idea is that we're going to consider the equation modulo a certain number, where this is chosen so that it will give us some insight into the problem. It can tell us which values of m and n we can definitely rule out and which values of m and n are going to be worth checking. So looking at the equation, it might be worth thinking about this modulo 11 to begin with, because then the right hand side would just be equivalent to 0 mod 11, and then we're looking for a power of 6 and a power of 5, which are equivalent to each other, modulo 11. So we'll talk a bit at the end about this process of how to choose this number so that we take everything modulo this number in a way that it's going to help us to solve the equation. But for our solution, we're actually going to consider things modulo 24. So if we just think about the equation modulo 24, we'll first of all look at what happens with powers of 6 modulo 24. So 6 to the power of 0 is just 1, so this is equivalent to 1 modulo 24. 6 to the 1 is just 6. Then 6 squared is 36, which is equivalent to 12 modulo 24. Then when we get up to 6 cubed, this is 216, which is actually a multiple of 24. So we get 0. And then thinking about this, we could multiply the 0 by the next 6 and so on. We would just get 0. Or you can think of this, of all of your multiples of 6 beyond 6 cubed are going to be multiples of 24. So all of these are going to be equivalent to 0 modulo 24 beyond a certain point. So you can see how this could be quite useful now. So let's compare this with our powers of 5. So 5 to the 0 is just 1 modulo 24. 5 to the 1 is just 5. And then when we get to 5 squared, this is 25. So this is equivalent to 1 modulo 24, which is where this gets very interesting, because now if we multiply by another 5, we would just get 5 modulo 24, or you can check 5 cubed 125 is equivalent to 5 mod 24. Then we get this repeating pattern of 1, 5, 1, 5, so 5 to the 4 is equivalent to 1, 5 to the 5 is equivalent to 5, and so on. So then, thinking about our equation, we've got 6 to the m minus 5 to the n is equal to 11. So rearranging this, we actually want 6 to the m equal to 5 to the n plus 11. So we could actually add 11 to all of our powers of 5 here. So then we get 5 to the n plus 11. This is just going to alternate between being 1 plus 11 and 5 plus 11. So this will go 12, 16, 12, 16, 12, 16, and so on. Whereas 6 to the power of m, this is going to be 1, 6, 12. Then everything from there on is equivalent to 0 modulo 24. So now for our values of m and n to satisfy our equation, it certainly needs to hold modulo 24. So we actually need 5 to the n plus 11, and we also need our 6 to the m to be equivalent to each other mod 24. And just looking at this list, we've got 12s and 16s. The only possibility is when 6 to the m is equivalent to 12 mod 24. So this is the case where we have 6 squared was 36, which is 12 mod 24. So the only possibility, you can just check then 6 squared minus 5 squared does give us a valid solution. This is equal to 11. So we can say that m equals 2 and n equals 2 as well is the only solution then to this equation. And we can rule out negative integers as well quite easily. So for example, if you had a negative power of 6, then 6 to a negative power minus 5 to any power, this is going to be much smaller than 11, so the equation would never hold. And similarly, if 5 had a negative power, then we would have 5 to the n plus 11 would be something between 11 and 12. So there's no way we could get 6 to an integer power to satisfy that. So these really are the only integer solutions, and we can also rule out all of the negative integers now. And now let's explore this choice of 24. So how did we choose 24, and how did we know that this could help us to rule out further solutions to the equation if we were to take it modulo 24? So in general, we're going to be looking at, for an equation like this, if we take it modulo k, how do we choose a value of k so that we can rule out further solutions to the equation. So as far as I'm aware, there isn't a definitive, precise approach we can apply for an equation like this that will definitely yield a value of k which solves our equation, rules out 
all further solutions to the equation, but there are some tips we can look at which can help us to make sensible guesses for our value of k, which will rule out a lot of possibilities. So with 5 and 6 modulo 24, this was particularly nice because our powers of 5 could only take two possible values mod 24, and our powers of 6 eventually only took one possible value mod 24. So we're looking for a value of k so that 5 to the n and 6 to the m both only take a handful of values modulo k. So just looking at the equation, we could think about taking it modulo 5 or modulo 6 or maybe modulo 11 as a nice way of simplifying the equation. This could be useful just to get a handle on the problem. But let's explore, for example, if we took this modulo 11, then our powers of 6 mod 11, first of all we'd have 6 to the 0 is 1, so we'll say 6 to the n goes 1, and then we go to 6, then 36 is equivalent to 3, 6 squared, and we actually go through all of the possible remainders here, all of the numbers from 1 up to 10, before we start to loop back round, 8, 4, 2, before we get back to 1, and then we get 6, 3, 7, 9, and, and so on. So you can see that working modulo 11, our power of 6 could be absolutely anything, so we can't really rule anything out like we did earlier. So we're looking for some modulo so that we take things modulo k, so that then our powers of 6 and 5 only take a handful of values modulo that number. So one thing we could do is, with 24 this was particularly nice because 6 to the power of m was always equivalent to 0 mod 24. And one way of guaranteeing that this happens is, let's think about the prime factorization of 6, so just 2 to the 1 times 3 to the 1. Our number 24 has got the exact same prime factors, 2 cubed times 3 to the 1. There's just more 2s involved there. But this is great because it guarantees that 6 to the power of m is always going to be a multiple of 24, so it'll always be equivalent to 0 modulo 24, so long as m is greater than or equal to 3. So one way of choosing our value of k could be, for one of our powers, we could say that we need to use a, mo a value of k so that it's got the exact same prime factors as 6 here. And we can't do the same thing for 5, because 5 and 6 don't have the same prime factors. So for 5, we've guaranteed that 6 is always going to be equivalent to 0 through this choice of 24. But for 5, we're actually going to use Euler's theorem to give a bit of insight into how we can make a sensible choice of k. So Euler's theorem, let's consider a is equal to 5 here. Then this is basically telling us that if we take things modulo k, 5 to the power of phi k is going to be equivalent to 1 modulo k. So thinking back to our previous example, if we've got back to 1 by the time we've raised 5 to the power of phi k, that must mean that we've started to loop back round by the time we've reached 5 to the power of 5 k. And this is particularly nice because it gives us an upper bound then on the number of different possibilities for 5 to the n modulo k. And this works if a and k are co-prime, so we would need our k to be co-prime with 5, so not to have any common factors with 5. And we would also want this 5k to be reasonably small, so 24 is quite nice because 5k, this function is essentially just counting how many integers less than k are there which are co-prime with k, they don't have any common factors with k. And 24 is nice because it actually has a lot of common factors with a lot of integers less than itself. So phi of 24 is only equal to 8. So then reading off from the theorem, this is telling us that 5 to the power of phi k, 5 to the power of 8, is equivalent to 1 mod 24. So this gives us an upper bound then. It's telling us that if we go through our powers of 5, we will loop back around to 1 by the time we reach 5 to the power of 8 if not before. So in our example, it was actually lower than this, we looped back round by the time we got to 5 squared, but it gives us an upper bound, and this is particularly useful perhaps if we're working with larger integers. So then using Euler's theorem, we've just taken our value of k, our 24, is 1 so that it's co-prime with 5, and also so that phi of k is quite small. So this is quite a useful trick we can apply to guarantee that we only get a handful of possibilities for 5 to the power of n modulo k. 
So just to recap then, we could consider, for example, modulo 5, modulo 6, modulo 11 to actually eliminate a term. And failing that, if we can't get that to work, we can look at perhaps taking one of the modulo 24 so that it's got the exact same prime factors as one of our numbers being raised to a power. So we could take something that just has twos and threes in its prime factorization, which guarantees that our sixes power is eventually always going to be equivalent to zero modulo that number. And then we can also try and use this idea with Euler's theorem of choosing our k so that it's co-prime with our other number being raised to a power and so that it also has quite a small value of phi k to limit the number of possibilities for 5 to the n modulo k.